Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about the longevity products or truth treatment products, something you may have heard about, read about, if you have a health challenge you or a loved one wants help dealing with, or if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, again, 844 236 6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products or if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, please call 866 735 2470 for a one time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, and change lives at the most basic and fundamental level there is the level of health. All from working out of your home, having your uh, own business, being your own boss writing off your home office, writing off your mileage and your stamps. And even if you just want to get your longevity products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, join the Brightside Ben team and uh, start yourself a business, get your products at the wholesale price and help, help change the world, help spread the word, spread the message, spread the word and help change the world. 866-735-2470 is their number and our truth treatment products are all available at truthtreatments.com. Be on the lookout. Stay tuned for our new fulvic acid priming mist, our biomimetic priming mist made with fulvic minerals, as well as high hyaluronic acid, amino acids, and lactate for skin softening and also for helping improve the, uh, uh, the application of our other truth treatment products. We'll have an announcement about that up at truthtreatments.com in the next uh, probably week or so, actually in the next few days or so. Okay, speaking of skin, we're talking skin, and we've been talking skin now for oh, probably four or five weeks or so. There's so much misunderstandings about the skin. You ever wonder why so many people have <laughs> dry skin despite the fact that everybody uses moisturizers? What is that about? There are so many moisturizers on the marketplace, and everybody has probably multiple moisturizers in their medicine cabinet. We all use moisturizers, but everybody has dry skin. What the heck is that about? Clearly, our moisturizers aren't helping us. That's because dry skin has nothing to do with a moisturizer. In fact, the word moisturizer is just a silly made-up word, as we'll talk about here in a sec. So what are the mechanisms of dry skin? What is it that causes dry skin? How can we be expected to deal with dry skin if we don't know what it is? I bet if you interviewed 999 people out of 1,000 and asked them what causes dry skin, they wouldn't know. It's a rare person who understands how the skin works in general, but specifically when it comes to dry skin. So it's no wonder we buy all these moisturizers. It's no wonder why we keep changing our moisturizing products. It's no wonder why there have to be thousands upon thousands of moisturizers out there. It's no wonder why we're spending tens, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars a year on moisturizers because we don't know what the heck we're doing. 
we don't know what's causing the dry skin and we don't know how to treat it. So here's the, here's the deal. I'm going to tell you right now what causes the dry skin. What causes dry skin? There's four main causes of dry skin. Actually, there's really only one cause of dry skin, but there's four elements that are involved in dry skin. One cause, four elements. The four elements that are involved in dry skin are a impaired barrier. The barrier, the surface of the skin is supposed to trap water. It's supposed to keep water in. When that barrier doesn't develop as it should, and we've talked about how that barrier develops, we'll, we'll, I'll mention that again here in a moment, but the barrier, the surface of the skin, it's called the stratum corneum, it's designed to keep water in. When that barrier does not form correctly, water leaks. It's called transepidermal water loss. That's the fancy name for saying water evaporation. Water basically evaporates through an impair, impaired barrier. The second element to dry skin is you're not making enough fats. Your skin's not making enough fats. One of the things the skin does is it produces fats. Skin cells produce fats. And remember, as the cells are rising up, they're dumping their contents overboard. Some of those contents are going to be fats, and those fats act to kind of trap water within the, uh, the epidermis underneath the skin surface. And then you also have these water magnets, these water sponges. They're basically proteins and sugars. These water magnets and water sponges are also dumped over. Uh, they also come out of uh, skin cells that are throwing their contents overboard. So the cell, skin cells are rising from the bottom to the top. They're throwing their contents overboard. Those contents become skin sponges or uh, uh, molecular sponges, water sponges, and they become fats. So you got two more elements. You got the barrier, you got the fats, you got the, the sponges. The sponges are, are technically called the natural moisture factor. And between the barrier and the sponges, and the fats, you've got three main elements for dry skin. And then there's a fourth element of dry skin. And this is something that's super interesting because we've only really known about this fourth element for about 20 years, the 90s, pretty much the early 90s when we first started to, when it was first uh, discovered that there are little water channels in cells. And the skin cells are actually carrying water. These wa water from the blood, which is located way deep, comes upwards, little water molecules, and these little water molecules fill up uh, the skin cells at the bottom. They fill up the skin cells through little tiny channels or pores, little rivers. They're called aquaporins. And these little aqua obviously means water, porins, pores, water pores. And these water pores live in the membrane of the skin cell. So water is actually coming upwards from the blood into these aquaporins in the skin cells. And we only knew this, we've only discovered this uh, 20 years ago. Nobody knew about aquaporins. Nobody knew that the skin cells were actually delivering water as they're moving upwards. It's got four main mechanisms here, one of which we, we only discovered about 20 years ago. Barrier, you got your lipids, you got your, your water sponges or natural, uh, natural moisture factor, and then you've got your aquaporins, which are all being derived from the blood. These are the four molecular or cellular characteristics of dry skin. But all of it has one issue. There's one problem. There's one cause that affects all four of these elements. And that cause is the skin cell. The skin cell is what is forming the barrier. The skin cell is what is dumping over the lipids and the natural moisture factor. And the skin cell is what is carrying the water through the aquaporins. It's the skin cell. Dry skin is a skin cell problem. It's a cell problem. And this should come as zero surprise to anybody who's listened to this program because all disease is cell disease. And I know dry skin isn't like a disease, but it's still a pathology. It's still something wrong. Skin's not supposed to be dry. Human skin should never be dry. If we have dry skin, it's not a, you know, it's not a cause for, for, for freaking out, obviously. It's just dry skin, but it's a sign. It's a signal. It means something's not correct. And because all of us have dry skin, we never think of that. Because all of us have dry skin, we just assume that it's normal to have dry skin. But it's not. It's a sign of a sick skin cell. A skin cell that's not doing its business. A skin cell that is somehow malnourished. A skin cell that is somehow hypoxic, doesn't have enough oxygen. And a skin cell that is somehow accumulating toxicity. It's the same stuff that goes wrong anywhere else in the body. And to effectively treat dry skin, you got to know how to treat the skin cell. You got to know how to treat your, all your cells, no matter what your health challenge is. The good news is it's not that hard. It's
basically everything we talk about here on this program, and it should, it's no different if you have a kidney disease or if you have dry skin or if you have atherosclerosis or whatever. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll return right after this. <clears throat> okay, we are back on the bright side, 844-236-6010. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com. Uh, I'm sorry, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com, also benfuchsarchive.com. And uh, you can purchase longevity products off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so talking about dry skin, one of the gr- most troublesome of all the, all the minor things that can go wrong in the body, one of the most troublesome is dry skin. And by the way, we don't even really know we have dry skin. What we feel when we have dry skin is hard skin. Nobody, has, nobody knows about dry skin. It's the hardness, the brittleness of the stratum corneum that is so uncomfortable. And it's this brittleness of the stratum corneum, the brittleness of the skin cells on the surface that uh, allows us to think that when we put a moisturizer on, we've moisturized our skin. What we've really done is we've softened that brittleness. The fats, the waxes, and the oils in your typical moisturizing product have a softening effect on the skin cell surface. And we perceive that as moisturizing. There's no, real, there's no such thing as a moisturizer. It's a made-up word. Moisturizer, the word moisturizer is a neologism. A neologism is, neo means new, loge means word. It's a new word. It's just a made-up word. It's an advertising word. It's a marketing word. Some genius on Madison Avenue, probably in the, at the turn of the 20th century, came up with the word. And now we all use it. Doctors use it. Scientists use it. Every, you know, cosmetic chemists use it. It doesn't mean anything. There's no such thing as a moisturizer. It's the dumbest word in the English in the English language because it's just doesn't even make sense. How do you moisturize? Think about it. When you moisturize, you moisture is water. So you should be able to stick your hand in water and you moisturize. That doesn't happen. In fact, if you stuck your hand in water for three days, you'd probably have a severe wound. There's something called uh, uh, MASD. MASD is a, a condition, a, 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 dermal, a dermatological condition where your skin becomes wounded from moisture, moisture-associated skin disease, MASD, where your skin becomes wounded from moisture. If, it, if, you, leave it, if you leave your hand in moisture long enough, it'll get inflamed, you can get wounded, you can get infected. Moisture, water doesn't moisturize, and water is moisture. That, ergo, there's no such thing as a moisturizer. Dumb word, but we all use it. I use it. I don't even like saying the word. I, I say hydra- hydration more than moisture. Sometimes I forget. And if you're talking to folks who just, you know, that's the, that's the way we speak. That's the words we use. That's the word we use. Sometimes I, I have to use it. But I don't like using the word moisturizer because it's a meaningless word. So if you have dry skin, you've got a skin cell problem, period. No surprise, all disease is cell disease. Skin cells are born at the bottom of the skin. And as they're rising to the top, They are facilitating skin hydration. Therein lies a major clue to treating dry skin. As cells rise to the top, they are facilitating skin hydration. They're transporting water, they're dumping their fats overboard, they're dumping their water magnets overboard, and they're forming the barrier. So here is where we want to be working. We want to be working on the health of the skin cell as it arises from the bottom to the top. As it's arising from the bottom to the top, it's doing its moist, it's, it's hydrating work. So it's this movement upwards. Now, what happens over time as we get sicker, as our body becomes more nutritionally deficient, as our bodies start to break down, this movement doesn't occur with as great facility as it does when, when we're younger. The move, not only doesn't the movement occur, but occur correctly, but the cells become dysfunctional themselves, especially at the level of the cell membrane, the outside part of the cell. This membrane is the key to cell health, all cell health, especially skin cell health because skin cells are so dynamic. Movement, the movement of cells depends on what is called cell talk. 
Cells are talking to each other. They're communicating to each other. They're sending messages to each other. They don't talk in words. They talk in chemicals, sort of like ants communicate. Ants, when they find a, uh, when an ant finds a, a, a honey or food or whatever ants like to find uh, or, or like to do, like to eat, or maybe some wood for their nest or whatever, whatever it is, they'll actually leave little chemicals, little, they're called pheromones, little pheromone chemicals, little molecules. They'll drop them off and a second ant will pick up the little molecule and read it somehow and interpret it somehow and it will drop its own little molecule and other ants. That's how ants communicate. You ever see, if you, if you poke an ant's nest, all of a sudden they're instantaneously, there's all this ant activity and it all comes from molecules that are being dropped off. Cells are talk, uh, ants are talking to each other by dropping off these little molecules. Well, guess what? Cells do the same thing. They talk to each other by dropping off little molecules. And one of the most important of all messages is the growth message and the stop growth message. Let's grow, let's not grow. Let's divide, let's not divide. Let's move, let's not move. This is the most fundamental messages that cells give to each other and it all depends on healthy membranes because the membranes are the ears. The membrane, the ears that listen to the uh, messages are, live on the membrane. It's the membrane, it's the fat. If all disease is cell disease, all cell disease is cell membrane disease. Membrane, the membrane is the brain of the cell. It's the information processor of the cell. And it's no accident that the membrane of a cell, no matter what it is, including a skin cell, is fatty and filled with cholesterol. The fats and the cholesterol and also lecithin are super electrical. They have an ability to hold on to all electrical energy. And by holding on to electrical energy and releasing electrical energy, they send messages. They communicate. They tell the cell inside what's happening on the outside. And when, little, when they catch little messages, little molecular messages, it sends out, it, 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 they in turn send a message internally to say grow or not grow. When the membrane's messed up, cell growth is messed up, period. So what does that mean? It means that if you want to have healthy, beautiful skin, if you don't want to have dry skin, work on the cell membrane. And you work on the cell membrane, the skin cell membrane, with fats and fatty vitamins. And if I tell you one thing, if I tell you one word for taking care of your skin from a nutritional standpoint, I would tell you fats. Fats, 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 and fatty vitamins, which are, of course, fats. Now, it's not just taking fats because you can take everything, anything you, you know, take all kinds of stuff, but if you don't absorb it, if you don't digest it, it doesn't do you any good. So it's not just taking fats. You also have to make sure your body is processing fats. This is what dry skin is about. It's a fat issue because it's a membrane issue because cells aren't doing their business. Skin cells aren't doing their business correctly. When skin cells don't do their business correctly, we get dry skin. Now, there's another major strategy for improving, uh, the, improving the way cells move and the, the way cells talk to each other and improving cell health. I'll tell you what that is here uh, when we come back or maybe in our next episode, our next Bright Side episode. But for now, I want to tell you fats, fats, fats if you have dry skin and also fatty uh, 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 supplements that help your body process fats, probiotics, fiber, digestive enzymes, pancreatin. Focus on the fats, EFAs. Cholesterol, essential fatty acids, I'm sorry, uh, uh, essential, vi essential fatty vitamins, vitamins A and D in particular, also to a certain extent vitamin E. That's how you handle dry skin. And topically, you can put stuff on your skin, but you know what? If you put stuff topically on, the, on your skin, you can make it worse. You can make your dry skin worse by using your moisturizer. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return on the bright side right after this. It Back on the bright side, got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. We'll get to your calls here in just a moment. 844-236-6010 is our number if you have questions about skin health or anything we're speaking about here today or, or something you may have heard about, read about, or if you just want help with a health challenge that you or a loved one is dealing with. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase Longevity products, you can call 866-735-2470, 866 866-735 Seven three five twenty four seventy, or if you want to sign to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, you can call eight six six seven three five twenty four seventy, or you can 
head to our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. From the journal Nature, inflammation drives the progression of Alzheimer's disease. According to a study published in the journal Nature, scientists of the German Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases in the University of Bonn in Germany, inflammatory mechanisms caused by the brain's immune system drive the progression of Alzheimer's disease. No kidding. <laughs> Everything that goes wrong in the body is about inflammation and protection immunity. Why is this important? It's important because it's the key to reversing disease. It's the key to understanding how to reverse disease. If you can tell the body to stand down, if you can tell the body that it's not necessary to have its defense system that's activated, inflammation will be suppressed. Now you can take drugs to suppress inflammation and that is indeed a major medical strategy to suppress inflammation pharmacologically. But that's not how you want to do it because the inflammation is your friend. It's a good thing. It's protection. You don't want to just shut it down. You want to figure out what's causing the attack. Now when we talk about an attack in the body, we always mean the blood. We don't say it. But you should know that whenever we talk about something getting in the body or we talk about the body protecting itself, we're referring to the blood. The blood is the common factor to every cell in the body. It's what every cell in the body has in common is the blood and the lymph. The lymph and the blood, they're basically the circulatory system. If you have Alzheimer's disease or any chronic long-term degenerative disease, you by definition literally have a blood and lymph problem. The blood and the lymph represent the entrance point of toxicity and uh, duress. The blood and the lymph also uh, are involved in nutritional deficiencies and lack of oxygen, the three major causes of disease, of, of cell disease. Work on the blood. All diseases, cell disease, all cell diseases preceded by dirty blood. Work on the blood. The blood, you work on the blood by focusing on digestive health. It's the main way things get into the blood. That's why every single, all roads lead to the gut. All roads lead to the intestine. All roads lead to the digestive system. All roads lead to how we eat and how we process food. Period. It is so simple. And I'm not saying that because I'm Mr. Food Guy. I'm saying it because it's just logical chemistry. It's just logic. It's not good, good person, bad person. It's not like, you know, we have all this baggage associated with food. It has nothing to do with that. It just has to do with if you're sick, this represents a major the major leverage point, the major control point we have over our health, over our wellness, and over our bodies. The level of the gut, the level of food, the level of the digestive system. Right, let me read one more here, and then we'll get to your calls. 844-236-6010, and we do have lines open. This is from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Diet rich in apples and tomatoes. Actually, I think I read this. I, think I might have done this story here a couple days. I will do it again. Uh, diet rich in apples and tomatoes may help repair lungs of ex-smokers. Apples and tomatoes are sources of very important phytonutrients, especially something called lycopene. But the best way to make sure that you're getting the nutrients from your apples and your tomatoes is to heat them slightly. Now, with apples, is obviously, it's going to be a little tricky. You can't really heat your apple. I suppose you can bake your apple, but certainly you can with tomatoes. These phytonutrients in the apples... In, in all plants are trapped in the outer part of the, for the most part, not always, but for the most part in the outer part of the plant. In fruits, usually, they're in the outer part of the plant, the peel. That's where the good stuff is, especially in apples. Not always the case. There's also good stuff in the pulp. But for the most part, the pulp is the sugar and the peel is the protection. So the good stuff's in the peel. A lot of people, first of all, just throw the peel out. I've seen people, you know, pe peel the apple and then toss that stuff out. That's unfortunate because that stuff is powerful medicine. But it's hard to access it, especially if you're dealing with gallbladder problems or liver problems or pancreatic problems or digestive problems or you don't have enough probiotics. Pretty much everybody. It's hard to deal with, uh, hard to access or remove or extract those phytonutrients out of the apple peel. So you might want to peel your apple and uh, leave it in some water. And, or actually water probably wouldn't work. Maybe, maybe put it in some water and uh, a little bit of coconut oil, right? Even just coconut oil, actually, now that I think about it. You need something fatty to pull those nutrients out. Or if you're going to eat apples, make sure you're using digestive enzymes with your apples. Make sure you're using lipase with your apples. 
Just because a nutrient isn't a fruit doesn't mean a nutrient isn't a food or a fruit doesn't mean necessarily that we're getting access to it. And apples are a classic example, which you will get easy access to if you eat a lot of apples, is a big hunk of sugar that's in the middle. Apples today are not apples like we used to eat many moons ago on the African savanna or even later. They used to be crab apples, tiny little apples. Today's apples are like gargantuan. They're like freak apples. There's some pretty darn big apples out there, and when an apple gets bigger, it's not the peel, for the most part, that's getting bigger. It's the pulp. A little bit the peel, but for the most part, it's the sugar part that's getting bigger. You don't have to eat the whole apple. And definitely don't toss out the peel. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to the phones and talk to Abra in West Virginia. Good morning, Abra. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing fine. Uh, I'm off topic. But I wonder if you'll consider doing a series on the ABO blood group. You're talking about the eat right for your type, blood type, that thing? Well, um, I've heard about it, but I really don't know. And it I'm really... not a big fan. It doesn't sound right to me. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are differences in how human beings process food, but it's much. it makes more sense to me to, take in, to, to treat yourself as an individual, not as a blood group. There, you know, there's four major blood groups, A, B, A, B, A, B, and O, right? You probably know that. Correct. And according to this guy, Peter D'Amo, D'Amo, I think he says his name, he wrote a book called Eat Right for Your Type. Most of you guys have probably heard of this. Uh, different blood types have different food needs. I don't know the specifics of it. I think it's like group A can only eat dairy and group B can't eat meat. It's things like that. I'm not sure the specifics of it. But I don't know if that's necessarily, necessarily right because animals have blood types too, you know. Lions have blood types, and deers have blood types, and you know, cows have blood types, and dogs have blood types. But they don't eat right for their type. A lion doesn't eat right for his blood type, does he? He just eats what he eats. Know. No, he just eats what he eats. There's no just special diet for lions. Like some lions only eat meat, and some lions don't eat dairy, and some lions, you know, animals have specific foods they like to eat, regardless of their blood type. So I'm not totally convinced about it. And even if it were true, we are so deficient in B vitamins as a, as a culture. We are so deficient in protein. We are so deficient in fats and fatty vitamins. We're so deficient in so many things that eat right for your blood type. Even if it was true, that's like first, that's like worrying about a mosquito flying around your head when you have a, an elephant on your roof. The elephant on the roof is nutritional deficiencies that we all have. Once you get that taken care of, then maybe eat right for your blood type. I, you know, I don't know enough about it, except I, I do know that animals don't eat right for their blood type, and it makes me suspicious about this whole eat right for your type. Uh, so first, first of all, let's take care of the big problems, which is nutritional deficiencies, and then we'll worry about eat right for your blood type. That, that's the best I can do for you there. Abra, I hope that helps. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great day, and uh, we got uh, more calls to get to when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's say good morning to Steve in California. How you doing, Steve? Great. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for calling. How can we help you? Okay, I, I'm somewhat confused. You, you know um, nut butters like cashew and almonds? Yes. Um, I know you're supposed to soak seeds, so yes. I don't know if, if they contain, you know, the stuff that should be washed off. So my, but my question is with the thyroid, if, if you're, um, I've, I've read where it said ashwagandha, Korean ginseng, and Google, you know, increase the T4 and, and Google the conversion of T4 to T3, et cetera. Does Google, the wrap up your, yeah, Google, Google, G-U, G-U-L, or, you know, does that absorb, though, your Oh, Google your, Lipid. Your mineral? Google lip, are you talking about Google yeah. Lipid? Yeah, does that absorb, though, your minerals when you're taking multivitamins? You got me. I'm totally lost here. What Now, what did, you start off by nut butters, and now we're talking oh, about the okay, thyroid. Well, well I, I, I was trying to figure out how they all interact with the thyroid. Okay. okay. So, what about the nut butters, that, you know, because they're not soaked? Uh, nut butters are not a great food, unfortunately. They're filling. They're protein-rich. They're tasty. 
but they're not a great food for a couple of reasons. First of all, when you process, first of all, nuts are problematic for a lot of people. The legumes, they, they can, and they can be, uh, a lot of people have cashew allergies, and I shouldn't say peanuts are legumes, and a lot of people have peanut allergies, and uh, then there's the other nuts. You know, peanut butter, peanuts are not nuts, so you got to separate peanut butter from nut butters. Exactly. Peanut butters can be a problem for people, uh, and cashew butter can be a problem for people. Almond butter can be a problem for people. But the real issues with nuts is they tend to be roasted, nut butters. They tend to come from roasted nuts. So you're getting rancid fats in there, uh, and that's the biggest problem. Process, processed nuts are just not a good food. I, I uh, eat raw uh, organic. Now, if you're eating them raw, them. that's a little bit different. And if you can handle it, then they're definitely a good source of protein. But sprouting is definitely the way to go. Soaking is the, definitely the way to go. If you can so soak what is it. your opinion with ashwagandha and Korean ginseng? You know, they, they call them adaptogens. Have you heard of that term, adaptogens? Sure. A, an sure. adaptogen for the listeners is stuff that go. If you're if you're hyper, it'll slow you down. If it's if you're slow, it'll speed you up. And it, it helps you go either way. And ashwagandha and ginseng have a reputation for being adaptogens. Still, if you got a thyroid problem, you don't have an ashwagandha problem. And this is my beef with herbal medicine and medicine in general. Although, of course, herbal medicine is, uh, you know, it's not as, as toxic as pharmacological medicine. But, you know, the idea of medicating, it strikes me as fixing. And when we're, something's wrong with the body, I don't know necessarily that we need to be fixed as much as we need to be fed. You follow me? There's yeah. something missing. I'm always looking nutritionally. Now, can it help you? Yes, maybe. Ashwagandha is certainly not going to hurt you. But you're not dealing with the underlying problem. You're not dealing with the digestive issues that are usually underlie thyroid problems. You're not dealing with the blood sugar issues. If there's, there's likely estrogen issues or cortisol issues, none of these are being addressed. Although you may symptomatically feel better. That's the only thing I have. That's the only problem I have with ginseng and ashwagandha and herbal oh. medicine in general. So, but I'm going in the dim too. Same idea, DIM for the listeners. I actually know quite a bit about DIM. Diindolyl methane. The guy who invented the or who uh, first extracted the molecule was a, was an anesthesiologist here in Colorado, in Boulder actually. And I got to uh, when I had my compounding pharmacy, he brought uh, he brought me a whole bunch of DIM to work with before it was released for topical. I was making topical products with the DIM. So I studied DIM a lot back in the 90s. There's another one called I3C. These are both elements that tie up estrogen. And by tying up estrogen, they can provide lots of benefits. Because remember, estrogenic health challenges are behind a lot of uh, autoimmune issues, thyroid issues, uh, Alzheimer's, fibromyalgia, a lot of est uh, reproductive issues, cancers. Uh, so by, by kind of protecting the body against excess estrogen or against toxic estrogen, uh, diindolyl methane, DIM, and I3C can get some, give, give you some health benefits. Uh, you know, there's more important things. It's not going to hurt you. Definitely not going to hurt you. Uh, and DIM, by the way, and I3C both are found in broccoli and Brussels sprouts and cruciferous vegetables, which accounts for, for the, uh, the real, real powerful anti-estrogen or estrogen balancing effects of the cruciferous vegetables. But, but they, of course, then you, then you have the thyroid thing people talk about. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Do they screw up the thyroid, though? Yeah, I was about to like say. I, I was about to say they're supposedly goitrogenic. But again... If you have a thyroid problem, the problem isn't the, what you're, the, the broccoli. The problem is underlying metabolism. It's the estrogen, how you're processing estrogen. It's cortisol, stress hormone. It's the digestive system and the blood sugar system, and that's where you want to be. Cruciferous vegetables are so valuable and so healthy. And by the way, if you steam your vegetables, they don't, your cruciferous vegetables, they don't have the same goitrogenic properties. I don't know that it's, you're necessarily going to get a goiter or destroy your thyroid with the cruciferous vegetables. So it's kind of like you have to make your own decision. Personally, I think the value, the nutritional value of the cruciferous vegetables far outweighs any potential negative benefits or negative issues. So uh, what I would be doing is I'd be doing the cruciferous vegetables and focusing on my digestive system first and foremost. T3 to T4, uh, or sorry, T4 to T3, which is activating your thyroid hormone. Guess what part of the body activates thyroid hormone? Steve. Are you asking me? Yeah. What, do you, what part of the body, given that you listen to this program and it's something I talk about all the time, what part of the body activates thyroid hormone? Um, the intestine. Okay. The gut. Your the probe. Yes. Yes. So that's what you want to focus on. That's the best way to make sure you're activating. And then autoimmune disease, which is, a, or autoimmunity, which is a leading cause of, uh, of Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, which is one of the major reasons why we're hypothyroid. That also is a gut issue. So all roads, once again, lead to the digestive system, and that's where I'd be focusing. How often hey, I want to... do you suggest taking HCL? I, I know you if you have it. a problem, if you have a problem with it, take it every meal. 
I mean, you don't. Um... You know, if you don't, you have to see. This is how you do it. If you you don't, I call it functional dosing. You take HCL and see if your digestion improves. If it does, you stay on it. If it improves a, a little bit and then you take more and it improves more, take more. If it improves even more when you take an extra dose or, or a bigger dose, then you keep, you keep raising the dose until you know, don't notice any improvement. That's called functional dosing. You take, okay, you, you answered keep, my questions. You're really okay. great. Okay, good. Thank you, Steve. Have a great you day. You have a great good. day. I'm glad you called. All right. Uh, Sandra in Florida, good morning. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Thank you for taking my call. Good afternoon. Sure. My sister, my sister um, has been hospitalized twice this month, and she's there right now in a hospital where she was just told yesterday she has C. diff. Okay, gotcha. Did you write a letter, by the way? Somebody wrote me a letter earlier today. I wrote an email, yes. Yes, I wrote, so she's got, she's I, got a C. diff infection. Yes. She okay. was admitted a few weeks ago with... Uh, severe diarrhea with bleeding, okay. stomach pains, and all that. Yeah, that's yeah, is, that's an awful, that's an awful thing. That's an awful thing. Give you a little background. Prior to this, she had a surgery of her shoulder, so she had been on medication. Hey, I need you to speak that. away from the phone. You're ex- you're exploding in the phone here. I can't quite understand you. So speak away from the phone. Okay. Say that again now. She had a surg- uh, shoulder surgery not long ago. It's associated with hospitalization. It could be what's called a, a nosocomal infection, an infection that you get in the hospital, and that, that unfortunately does happen. Um, is it, are they saying it's antibiotic resistant? Well, they're saying that it was caused by the antibiotic. Yeah. Um, well, you know, antibiotic, antibiotic, antibiotics can definitely do it, and that's one of the problems that you have with antibiotic, with uh, with antibiotics. Um, you know, you're, you got you. It's going to be a tough road for her. What she really needs to do is be really, really, really focusing on intestinal health when she gets out of the hospital. Problem is, they're going to probably pump her full of other antibiotics, right? What are they giving her? Yeah. I'm they're not probably sure what they're giving her. They give the but big guns. Convenient. They give the heavy yeah, treat, yeah. the heavy guns. Have they talk, talked talked yeah. about fecal transplant? No. You, know, you might want to look into fecal transplants. You know, that that's a, that sounds kind of gross, but, but that's where they put the, the uh, fecal bacteria from a healthy person into the fecal back t- in, into the intestine of, a, uh, of an unhealthy, per, per, uh, unhealthy person to introduce healthy, good bacteria in through, the, in through the colon. That might be something that she wants to think about. It's, it's been shown to be an effective treatment, so you might want to look into that. It's called fecal okay. transplant. Fecal transplant, fecal microbiota transplant. All right, I got to go. We're out of time. Thanks for your call, Sandra. Good luck with your sister. God bless you. Uh, Let's see if we get Natalie in real quick. Natalie, got something quick for us? Natalie? Yes. Natalie. Hi, Ben. How are you? I'm doing good. We only got about a minute, though. Oh, gosh. Okay, skin, skin. Um, All right, quick question. Um, As far as, you know, uh, using water on the skin to, to cleanse it off, how many times can you do that? I mean, if you're exercising almost every day, is it going to hurt the skin? No. It's, just, uh, okay. it's not going to hurt your skin to have a little dirt on your skin, a little sweat on your skin. It, it, it's not going to yeah. hurt to wash. But, you know, you don't necessarily need to wash as much as you as you think you need to wash. You know, unless you're but totally filthy sweat, and stinky. And, yeah, no, if you're sweaty, that's yeah. true. You want to get that off your body. But, you know, unless you're unless it's pretty dramatic, you don't need to be taking several showers a day or washing your... You, washing your hands probably want to do that a little bit more, especially if you're around dirt or, you know, if the, for bacterial contamination. But taking showers all the time and and rinsing your whole body you you know we overdo it a little bit and the soap is definitely not a good thing natalie i'm out of time only about 20 seconds have a have a great day good to talk to you thanks for listening to the bright side friends please check out my websites brightsideben.com for all the longevity products as well as criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com and our true skin health products are all available at truthtreatments.com have a wonderful beautiful awesome spectacular day we'll talk to y'all later bye for now